Mighty God, we thank you for the privilege we have even to be among the living. Only the living can hear your word, Lord. Lord, we appreciate you because you are faithful. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace upon our lives. As a church, as a family, mighty God be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, even as we have come to hear from you this morning, that you will speak to us. Lord, speak to everything in our lives. Even those things that appear seemingly dead within us, let your word quicken them and bring them to life in Jesus' name. Simple our hearts to receive from you. Increase our faith to act on the world. Let your grace abound. Let the Holy Spirit help us. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout hallelujah. You are so happy, excited to be alive. Shout hallelujah. Okay, let me put it this way. Those online, if you can't shout, you can shout where you are anyways. You want us to hear you, just type your hallelujah on whatever Andrew or um, platform you are watching from. But those in the church, you are so grateful to see another, you know, day that the Lord has made. Shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we return praise to you. And we are not taking it for granted. The name of God be praised forever. In Jesus' name. You can please have your seat. God bless you. God bless you really good. Everyone who is doing one thing or the other to make it possible for us to be able to stream online, for us to be able to still keep the live worship going on within the reduced number that has been provided. God bless you so much. We are not taking it for granted. The Lord Almighty will reward your labor of love in the mighty name of Jesus. So today we are continuing with our series on great grace. Who can remind us what we learned last week? The topic, whatever it is that you can remember. Last week. Grace is a merited favor, and we expounded on that, right? We gave specific example how that is actually a correct way to define grace. Any other person? The grace that pardons. That was the topic, as a matter of fact. The grace that forgives you and me. And today we are looking at grace that empowers. Part one, grace that empowers. And we're going to focus on some of them today. And by the grace of God, God keeping us, by next week we will finalize. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 to 6. Genesis 39, 1 to 6. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he was successful and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found grace in his sight and served him. Can we please note that? Joseph found grace in his sight and served him. Then he made him an overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. Verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. And the Lord blessed the reading of his word. 
in the name of Jesus. And I pray for somebody, anywhere you are, grace will show up for you. The grace of, you, of God upon your life will find expression over everything that concerns you. The Bible says that because Joseph was in Potiphar's house, everything that concerns Potiphar changed dimension. That was a measure of grace. And I pray everything that you, that you touch, everywhere you go, everywhere you are, you find yourself, the grace of God will speak for you. In the name of Jesus, people will look at you and say, this is grace at work. So it shall be in Jesus' name. Grace that empowers. What does that mean? It is divine input in human that produces supernatural output. You know, each Sunday that we come, since we started this series, with divine grace in different dimensions. And the basis of that is because the scripture tells us that grace has the manifold dimension. So today we are looking at the grace that empowers and we're defining it as divine input in human that produces supernatural output. What am I trying to say? In the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 40, the scripture was clear to say, that Jesus grew and became strong in spirit and filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. We saw in Jesus, even though he came as the son of man, we saw in him an embodiment of God's grace. Why? The process of his conception was uniquely different. As a matter of fact, it can never be replicated till the end of the world. No other son of man will be conceived the same way Jesus was conceived. And I'm sure you know what I'm trying to say this morning. That was a mark upon Jesus Christ that made him stand out in everything he, he did, in everywhere he found himself, in everything he speak. He stood out on the platform of grace. And in that Luke chapter 2 verse 40, we saw a confirmation that the grace of God was upon him. And so he became strong and grew and he was filled with wisdom. We also saw an example in the life of Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis 37, we, I mean, we read the story of Joseph. Even though he wasn't the firstborn, he wasn't the secondborn, but somehow within Joseph, he knew that he, he was a boy that carried the grace of God. A time came in his life that he had a dream. Verse 5, Genesis 37. And he came to share the dream with his brother. Also in verse 9, he had a second dream. And when you put these two dreams together, it was an indication of the leadership position that God, by his grace as we served for Joseph. Now the question is, which leadership school did Joseph go that prepares him for that position? Which leadership courses that we had, that we read in the scripture that he took, that made him to be the preferred of God for that leadership role to serve his people? That was grace. As much as there was no theoretical or academical um, experience for him to prepare, in all the, when the time came for him to, to take that position of leadership, he did not fail. He did not fail. That was why we define grace that empowers as divine input in human that produces supernatural output. And that is not to say that you have no role to play in all of this. It is not to say that you have no job to do. But what we are saying is that by your effort alone, you will not get the result that you desire. It is when the grace of God connects with your effort. 
that the difference comes that people can see and begin to wonder why is he you all the time and that was the case with joseph when he shared the first dream and the second dream with his brother for each time he shared the dream with them they hated him the more they hated him the more and so i have a word for somebody maybe you feel hated unduly or you feel envy undeservedly don't worry it's a mark that you carry a grace of god in your life maybe in your place of work you are the preferred of your boss or in your place of work what every other pers person does looks normal but when you do it it becomes you know super uniquely normal let me use that grammar and then they you know come together to envy or to hate don't worry it's a mark that you carry grace and i pray that grace will not diminish in your life in the name of jesus so when joseph shared his dream with his brother while joseph understood what god was preparing him for his brother thought that those dreams were just a further confirmation of the of the privilege that he had being the favorite of jacob their father but far more than that and so they they grew in hatred they grew in jealousy for joseph but at the end of the day the grace of god found full expression in his life the grace that worked for joseph will work for you in the name of jesus and you won't blame the people that hate you for no reason you won't blame the people that envy you for no reason why because they cannot understand the dimension of grace that is empowering you somebody listening to me because what they understand in the world system is merit the world system operates by the system of merit what i'm trying to say is that you only become you know successful if you have gone to school if you have got good grade then you get good job you get good job you become successful merit system Merit system or a hey, you are the most senior in the family then you should be always be the one to take the lead in in family discussion merit system and so when they see you coming from nowhere even though you do not fit into their merit definition they begin to question and query why it has to be you but the grace system operates on mercy system are you with me the word operates on merit system grace operates on mercy system the system of mercy and that was why last week we said that mercy, uh, that, that grace is an extended mercy remember so it was the grace that was at work in joseph's life even though he was not the firstborn he was number 11 yet he became the favorite of the father and the reason jacob gave was because he gave back to him in his old age but the question is that it's benjamin number 12. are you with me but somehow grace found him and stood him out among the 12 children of his father this same joseph go to the land uh, to the to the house of potiphar the scripture says that potiphar made him an overseer an overseer in the in the modern language can be termed to be a general manager of his business and yet no academic knowledge no theoretical knowledge at least we read concerning moses that moses was learned in the art and science of egypt moses had a formal education there's no record in the scripture that joseph had a formal education yet as a general manager he excelled the scripture says that the moment he stepped into that office 
the business of Potiphar multiplied. Why? Because it carried grace to excel in everything it does. Divine inputs in human that produces supernatural outputs. I pray that grace will work for you. That grace will work for you. Everything you touch will prosper in the name of Jesus. Where people are failing, when it gets to your turn, success will show up. In the mighty name of Jesus. The exams that people write two, three, four times, when it's your turn, it will just be one attempt and it goes. In Jesus' name. The interview that people struggle to, to get successful, when it's your turn, grace will speak for you. There's a dimension of grace that empowers a man never to be rejected. That when people are turning, uh, are being turned back, when you just show up as a carrier of grace, is a check mark. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. So today we are going to see seven ways. Seven ways on how grace empowers a man. Or seven ways or seven things that grace empowers a man to do. Put it the way you understand. But we are looking at seven points. We will see how far we can go today. On what grace that empowers can do in the life of man. And our scripture reference will be that Genesis 39 that we read in the life of Joseph. One of those things that that grace does from what we read in the, in the, in the story of Joseph in verse um, in verse 3 in verse 3 the Bible says in Genesis 39 and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord had made all he did to prosper in his hand so Joseph was doing something that was what that means. He was doing something. Right? Verse 4. Joseph found grace in the sight and served Potiphar. So the grace empowers a man first and foremost to serve. I know this sounds so familiar to us in the church. We've spoken around service in the past. But trust me, don't see your mind. Open your mind up. There's something new coming. Grace primarily empowers a man to serve. Genesis 39 verse 4. He found grace in the, in the sight of Potiphar. And the Bible says he served him. He served him. So as a child of God, grace empowers you. He empowers me to serve to the glory of the almighty God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, the Bible says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. So you cannot, it doesn't matter how, how you want to dodge it or how you want to, you know, attempt to ignore grace primarily empowers for quality service good work as we read in that second corinthians 9 8 for every good work so the question is why why would service be the first thing that grace empowers a man to do why i mean i i, I have asked that question because every time i try to study grace service keeps jumping at me and I became so curious. Why is service a necessity to express the grace of God? The answer is simple. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. First Corinthians 4, 1. He said, Let man so account of us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So what can you bring out from that scripture? That man should account of us as servants of Christ 
and stewards of the mysteries of God. Grace calls you into stewardship. Grace does what? It calls you into stewardship. Into stewardship. And when you put that together with 1 Peter chapter, chapter 4, verse 10, very clear. 1 Peter 4, 10. It says that each of us has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. For everyone who has received a gift, a minister that gift to the other person as what? As stewards of the manifold grace of God. So you cannot discuss grace and Dutch service. Okay? As a matter of fact, Joseph began his journey to destiny on the platform of service. In Genesis 37, his father called him, your brothers are on the field grazing the cattle. Go and check their welfare. And he accepted. Even though he knew that his brothers were haters, he knew he was not saved in their midst. But he still agreed to offer that service of checking on their welfare. And you know the story. He got captured, was thrown into the pit. From the pit, he got sold. And he, after being sold, he found himself in Egypt. And then he became a prisoner and then a prime minister. So the journey of his service did not start with the dream he had. Sorry, the journey of his leadership, of his greatness, did not start with the dream he had. It started on the platform of service. Genesis 37. So it is very important for us that when we see ourselves as a carrier of the grace of God, that we come to reality that we be, that we are stewards of the manifold grace of God. And there is one thing that is important to us to know. One thing is, is important. When it becomes a carrier of the grace of God, you no longer become a, a reservoir of that grace. You become a channel of the grace of God. I mean, when you interpret First Peter 4, 10, that you minister that grace to other person, right? You become a channel. Why? A reservoir is a self-contained solution. A reservoir stays in a place. It fills up. People have to come to fetch or to draw to be blessed. But a channel pushes out like a funnel. How does that connect with Jacob? I mean, with, with, with Joseph? When Joseph became a prime minister and he invited his brethren to Egypt, the Bible said there were 70 of them that came to Egypt. But by the time they are leaving Egypt to the promised land, they were over 2.5 million people. So Joseph did not express his grace as, as a reservoir that people have to come one by one to draw from. He expressed that grace as a channel that through one person he multiplies to the other and he keeps going. And that is what God wants us to be once we are empowered by his grace. He doesn't want us to be a, a, a reservoir that is a self-contained solution. He wants us to, to be contagious in the way we express that grace to everyone. And I pray the Lord will make us such in Jesus' name. But we must be willing. We must be willing. I like what Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 says. Ephesians 3, 1 to 2. And I'm going to compare New King James Version with New Living Translation. New King James Version says, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. 
NLT makes it clearer. NLT, New Living Translation. He said, when I think of all these, Hi, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, assuming by the way that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentile. Do you have that in your scripture? So what does that mean to you and to me? Is that the grace of God was not given to you for you. That grace was given to you for others. That is what Ephesians chapter chapter um, 3, 1 to 2 is, is, is saying to us. That the grace of God is given to you, not for you, but is given to you for others. That you become a channel of blessing. We have been a reservoir for too long. It is about I, me, and myself. But grace is saying, no, enough of I, me, and myself. Grace is saying, you have to begin to extend the benefit of God in your life to other people. And how can you do that? How can you do that? Maybe God has helped you by his grace to be a supervisor in your place of work. How do you treat the people under you? How do you relate to them? Are you the one that, that goes on vacation and they declare praise and worship? By the reason of your leadership style, so draconian. Or are you the one that, that, that is leading people but will never show them the way of leadership? You will always hide information. You will hide training from them. Why? Because you are afraid. If you show them, they will take your job. Then you don't carry enough grace. If you are a grace carrier, it doesn't matter how much of yourself you pour out by impacting people. They cannot take your job. They cannot take your place. Why? Because grace will always distinguish you. Remember, as a grace carrier, you must become a channel. That under you, people are getting more rapid promotion than they would have gotten under other leaders. That is how you can empower. Or you are in a meeting and you know the solution to a problem. And you keep it to yourself. So that you can become a small God in that your company to be worshipped. That is not the work of grace. When Pharaoh called on Joseph, even Joseph had the monopoly of that knowledge. What did he do? He shared. It is in your expressing the grace of God that you will find fulfillment. That is the point I'm trying to make. It is in functioning using that grace that you will get promotion it is in doing that that you will get job so enough of being a self-contained solution like a reservoir it is a moment that we begin to act like a channel as we are commanded in first peter 4 10 and as we learned from paul ephesians 3 1 to 2 Paul said the grace of God was given to me for you. He didn't say it was given to me for me. It was given to me for you. So people must feel your presence when you are around. So much that when you are not there, they feel you more. But many people feel bad that their absence is not, is not felt. Whereas their presence was not even felt so if, if, if your presence is not is not felt your absence cannot be missed are we together so that's what grace makes us to be he empowers us to serve he empowers us to express he, 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 he empowers us to develop as a channel the lord will help you and me in the name of jesus people must must crave to have you in their in their midst they must crave to have you in their community 
they must be you know fighting over you to be in the same project with them because they know that you work exceptionally different back i mean back in the days in africa when some people are drafted to my the project i'm leading i go and say i don't want them because i know there will be a drawback but let it not be said of a child of god that is a grace carrier that you are a slacker on the project that is not the way joseph had no formal education but he demonstrated leadership with with unfaulted success may the grace of god find expression in your life in the name of jesus grace empowers you to stand it first empowers you to serve it also empowers you to stand first peter chapter 5 verse 12 he said this is the true grace of god stand fast in it first peter 5 you can please open that i'm going to spend a few a few time on that on that uh, chapter first peter 5 1 to 12 verse 12 says this is the grace of god stand fast in it and i'm paraphrasing it so when you go to verse 1 through to verse 11 you begin to understand what paul is asking you and me to stand on as the grace of god verse 2 verse 2 says that we must stand as shepherd stand as what shepherd first peter 5 2 be shepherd of god's flock that is under your care serving as overseers you don't have to be a pastor to be a shepherd okay anywhere you are and you have people looking up onto you for support for direction for compassion for help you are a shepherd in that capacity and grace is expecting you to stand as a shepherd in that capacity i know in the world the world is filled with wolves and hirelings we know wolves wolves don't have shepherd wolves don't have sheep so they don't they don't care for sheep no matter how far they come to steal the sheep but the hirelings hirelings only function when they know they have something to gain they serve they, or they act as shepherd for an immediate reward but a true shepherd understand what is at stake is more than the immediate reward So I like the contribution in the Sunday school this morning. Somebody said that when you adopt a child, that what you are doing, you are lending to God because the child cannot pay you. He can't pay you. So hirelings will only become responsible when there is immediate reward. But a shepherd does not put reward in question, in consideration. They just want to help and support so the grace of god is asking you to stand as a shepherd don't be too quick to give up on people don't be too quick to condemn people oh i've tried to preach to him once twice he's not listening let him go a shepherd will give him life and his life to the sheep we read that in the scripture a shepherd gives his life to the sheep so grace is expecting you to serve as to stand as a shepherd stand in endurance because why a lot is at stake a lot is at stake more than what you would gain on the immediate as your reward more than the thank you more than the appreciation more than the text message there is more at stake look at Thomas and Paul a point in time came that Paul declared Thomas has forsaken me why because he has he loved this world so Thomas painted a picture of being a hireling to us 
he left when there was nothing beneficial again but Paul stood he stood to the end as a shepherd mentoring disciples planting churches admonishing elders resolving issues he stood and he's saying to us in verse 12 stand on this grace of God because he said they are the true grace so grace also expects you to stand in submission he expects you to stand in as a shepherd he expects you to stand in submission number verse number five first Peter five number five he says that young men in the same way be submissive to those who are older clothe yourself with humility toward one another grace of God resist pride and no man functioning under grace becomes so arrogant that nobody can control but more importantly we're expected to submit to the will of God for our lives to the will of God for our family even when it's not convenient when it's not convenient when we when we submit to God when it's convenient we are only cooperating because we are enjoying we are benefiting but when we submit when when when, when we obey God when it's not convenient that is when submission is really really put to test so grace expects you to submit he expects you also to walk in faith to stand in faith grace expects to stand in faith first peter chapter 5 that verse 9 verse 9 says resist him standing firm in the faith because you know your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering this jumped at me when i read this it jumped at me why because the devil specializes in exaggerating our challenges he will come and remind you of the trouble the problems you are facing and he will magnify it so much in your mind to the point that you almost want to give up the devil will make you think as if you are the only one facing that issue but the scripture is saying to us first peter chapter 5 verse 9 he says stand in faith why because the same suffering is being experienced by your brotherhood in the world so why you think you are the only one facing that situation it is not common to you alone it is not peculiar to you alone and we thank god for scripture first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 he said there is no temptation that has overtaken you that is not common to man oh you stay too long jobless it is not common to you you fasted you prayed for a prayer point 10 years and it hasn't come through you want to give up it is not common to you alone first corinthians 10 13 he said but god is faithful he will not tempt you beyond your ability and he said in that temptation there is a way of escape so your job as you are waiting on god is to be vigilant to understand the escape plan of god the escape plan so instead of thinking to give up as the devil is suggesting in your mind and i'm speaking to somebody concentrate on the word of god and be looking to locate the solution that solution is your way of escape that solution is your what is your way of escape is your way of escape so don't give up on god don't give up on yourself faith i'm sorry grace expects you to stand in faith he expects you to stand in faith i'm rushing now he also expects you or he empowers you to say no to say no 
grace empowers you to serve he empowers you to be a shepherd he also empowers you to say no to say no to what to say no to sin to say no to unrighteousness to say no to immorality titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 12 for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and choose to live soberly righteously and godly in this present age so the grace of god that empowers he empowers you to say no oh there's a temptation that is so big that you cannot resist that is a lie is a measure that you are deficient of grace because if you have sufficiency of grace you are empowered to say no joseph said no when when it did not make sense praise the lord so whatever it is that is not of god grace empowers you to say no to it as a matter of fact those who are growing in grace they are declining in sin okay you cannot be growing in grace and be growing in sin bible says god forbid god forbid romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 certainly not so the measure of grace you carry should position you and empower you to have overcome some level of sin grace and sin does not work in the same correlation he, i mean you have to be, be able to say no as a measure of the grace of god upon your life job 28 28 he said behold the fear of the lord is that is wisdom and to depart from iniquity or from evil is understanding so grace helps you to say no to anything that is evil anything that 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 you know would make god to be unhappy grace empowers you to say no to them and i pray you would be so filled with the grace of god that the same sin that keeps throwing you down from today you are empowered to live above it in the mighty name of jesus let's be on our feet we've overstretched the time a bit ask god that his grace will be multiplied upon your life his grace will be multiplied upon your life ask god pray to god just a few minutes we will continue next week pray that the grace of god will be multiplied upon your life to serve genuinely his grace will be multiplied to to stand as a shepherd as a shepherd his grace will be multiplied to say no to ungodliness and to unrighteousness that his grace will keep you and make you work stronger and get you better in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you for your word we appreciate you for the heart that is listening thank you for the for the spirit of obedience that would work out a self-reflection and produce a positive behavior father be exalted in jesus name lord as we have had your word we pray that your grace will not diminish in our life your grace will not forsake us everywhere we turn we pray your grace will show up for us in the name of jesus where strength has failed us grace will speak for us where strength has disappointed us grace will support us in the name of jesus where natural forces has placed limitation over our lives and our ability to stand tall as a shepherd and in service and in faith for you we pray your grace almighty will provide stability for us to stand tall in the place of service to stand as a shepherd and to stand in faith 
to say no to sin. Thank you because it is done. We pray and we receive in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, we will look at three or four more things that the grace that empowers can do. The Lord will bless you as you show up next week. The Lord will bless you as you connect next week those watching online. Shall we share the grace of God in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and never. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the Liberty Assembly, raising a glorious generation.